All right, today you're doing uh, lesson 9.2.2. Uh, you've been learning how to graph uh, equations, and, and you've learned how to graph equations with both a y and an x variable and, and how those linear graphs look and which side to graph and everything like that. This time, we're going to look at graphing uh, not just linear, but also nonlinear inequalities. So uh, there's your purpose for what we're doing today, and let's get started. All right, the very first one here. On question 934 in your book, if you had to graph this inequality uh, right here, you would know that we're in y equals mx plus b format right here. So my uh, y-intercept would be at negative 3 and my slope would be down 5 over 3. So you might agree that if you graph that, you would come up with a graph that looks similar to this, where the y-intercept is <clears throat> at negative 3, and the slope goes down 5 and over 3, or in other words, of looking at that is up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 3, 1, 2, 3, right there. So you might agree with the line that got drawn on there. Then it says that y is greater than or equal to. Well, the equal to part makes us a solid line instead of a dashed line. And the greater than is all the values of y that are greater than these right here. So that might make sense right there as to why that side is greater is greater. Now, one of the things I want to get you used to is starting to think about test points, okay? Is how can you prove that this is true? And I, and I love that they have on part B here where they use the point zero, zero, and then whenever zero, zero is available, you definitely want to use that as a test point. What that means, if I take the x coordinate of zero and I plug that in here, Negative 5 thirds times 0, well, anything times 0 is 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. If I plug in the test point of 0 for y, is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? The answer to that is yes, true, that is. So this point right here tests out yes or correct or true, whatever way you want to say that. And so this side, the true side, always gets shaded. If you were to plug in any point on this side, it would come out as being false. All right, um, I need to decide to test point negative 3, 2. So negative 3 and up 2, right up here. You might notice that this one also, oops, I'm sorry, negative 3 and 2. This one looks like it might fall on the line. It's kind of hard to tell, so let's test it. Negative 3 times negative 5 thirds comes out to be negative 5. I'm sorry, negative 3 comes out to be positive 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. Well, is 2 greater than or equal to 2? And the answer is yes, it is. So negative 3, 2 falls right on that line, and that kind of shows up right there. All right, moving on. Um, I like this question right here. This is about a foreign aid, and then governments, the United Nations, deciding who to give foreign aid to. <clears throat> here is what they say. Uh, it was decided that only countries in which people who live in poverty is more than half of its total population will receive foreign aid. So think about that. You take your total population of your country, and if more than half of those people are living in poverty, then they're going to receive federal aid or United Nations aid to kind of help those people. So here is kind of a grid right down here of all the people. This is their total population right here. And this is how many of them are in poverty. So let's think about that for a second. Let me come up with, I wonder if the color this shows up as. Oh, good. Now we'll just use that little circle right there. So zero people, half of zero is zero. So we will just use that as our starting point. We're going to make a little infinite cloner here. So let's go to 10. If there's 10 million people, half of 10 million people would be 5 million. So right there would be our poverty line, right there. Let's go to 20 million people. Half of 20 million would be 10. So that one should go right there. And 30 million, half of 30 would be 15. Take 30 million up to 15. Right there. And finally, 40 million and half of 40 would be 20 million. All right, we need to make a line for this. I'm going to slide this over for a moment so I can get a dotted line. 
Why am I doing dotted? Well, if you look up here, it says any uh, that then needs to be more than, <clears throat> not more than or equal to, but simply more than. So as I go back down here, I start at my zero zero location, and I want to graph that through all of those dots. And it looks like I made a mistake in here. Let's see if this dot looks a little bit outside. Oh, look at that, 20. Yeah, it's not quite far enough over. Whoopsie, don't want to move that thing. What am I doing? I want to move this one right to there. Now if we move that line back to where it should be, right there, it looks a little better now. All right, so now, I only am going to give aid to those countries that are greater than uh, half the population. So if we look at that, I'm going to slide this over, and we're going to grab a highlighter pen. The numbers in population that are greater than that means anything shaded on this side of the yellow line. So Uganda would get aid. Madagascar will get aid. Zambia will get aid. Um, Rwanda, I would say no. Now, Honduras, that's a really good question right there. It looks like it's right on the line. So what we would really need to do if we wanted to make sure about Honduras is we would actually have to look at their physical population and see, is it over half? Is it exactly half? Or is it less than half? Um, it doesn't look like it would be less than half, but it might be exactly half. If it is exactly half, they do not get aid. But if it is just slightly over half, then Honduras also would get aid. All the rest of these countries, Tanzania, probably Rwanda, we'd probably check them out, Cambodia, Peru, poor Peru, so close to that line, yet they will get no aid, and all these countries do not get aid. So, hopefully that makes sense. That these down here would not be shaded. These up here are the shaded ones. Let's just look at that fun shading up there. And so you'd have that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Moving forward. I think I'm still on a highlighter, so let's get off that. Now, <clears throat> if you were to graph this, in fact, I would like you to pause the video and try and graph this. And what I would do is make a, uh, uh, a 5 to negative 5 xy chart. So plot x and y points. So you plot in your x points from negative 5 to positive 5, and then graph that. Go ahead, pause the video. If you paused your video and have done and did this work, you should have gotten a graph that looks similar to this. You should have had a parabola. That's a U-shaped thing. Now the question becomes, where do you um, where do you graph this? Do you graph this on this side of it, or do you graph it on this side? Well, notice that 0, 0 is available to check our point right here. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. If I plug in 0 for y, is 0 less than 3? And the answer is yes, that is true. 0 is less than 3. So we would shade the 0, 0 portion of this, and we'd shade below. If you checked any point inside of here, it would not check. For example, if I check the point 2, 0, plug in 2 for x and 0 for y, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 8 is negative 4, negative 4 and positive 3 is negative 1. So this side comes out to be negative 1. Over here I have 0. Is 0 less than negative 1? No. 0 is not less than negative 1. This point right here, this 2, 0, is a false point, which means we do not shade that part of it. So that is how you shade a nonlinear. Why are we shading nonlinears? Well, because what we're going to be getting back to is you probably remember doing those systems of equations. Well, we're going to be doing systems of equations, but with inequalities coming up, where we can graph a line and a parabola, and we put it all together. So that's what's coming up, and that's the purpose of where we're headed with that. All right, moving on. With your team, actually, what all I want you to do is take these three, pause the video, and graph it. Go ahead, pause it. All right, you should be back. This one, 
no big deal to graph that. Should have had your y-intercept, your negative two-thirds slope. It's a dotted line because there's no equal sign, and we wanted all the points less than that. Right here, y equals that. You'd make your 0 to 5 chart, and you'd chart that. 0, 0 is not a good testing point because it's right on the line. So you probably want to pick a point up here or a point over here. These points would come out to be false. These points in here were true, so you'd shade up here. It's a solid line because there's an equal sign on there. X is less than 2. Well, remember, it doesn't matter what Y is, X always equals 2. If Y is 10, X still equals 2. If Y equals negative 10, X still equals 2. If Y is 0, X still equals 2. So that's why it makes a vertical line. There is no, it's a dashed line because there's no equal sign, and we want all the values that are less than 2, so we shade that side of it. All right, let's see if there's anything left in today's lesson. <clears throat> You're supposed to write an inequality for this, but I'm not going to make you do that. And that brings me up to that. That's all I got for today, you guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow in class. Have a good day.